Well, good to see everybody. I'm, this is this is we're excited to continue continue this on. It's um, it's hard. To, when did we first um, adjourn? Not adjourn. It's the opposite of that. We first um, kicked off the energy committee. Um, I guess year and the. I guess it was a year ago, right? A year ago this, um, was it this fall, last fall? I think it's actually almost two years. I think we started in January. Really? Um, two years? Yeah. I think it's more like the spring. We struggled to find time for a first meeting. Oh, that's right. That's <laughs> I think right. we were in March by the time we got our first meeting. But yeah, officially we were calendar year. Uh, this is our second, we were almost at the end of our second year. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Well, um, well I got we, my notice today that I wasn't going to, that, that they didn't want me on the committee anymore. My time expired, so. Yeah, you should have gotten that, you know, you, yeah. Yeah, a, little bit, a little bit later, but um, I guess you got the message, you know, um, by mail. So <laughs> it's been fun having you, Sam. Uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it occurs to me that, um, there's probably some formal steps we need to take in order to kind of re reappoint or recommission. Yeah, our they, 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 the next one is is a full three years, and I told them, I don't know how long I'm going to be around three years. I mean, you know, I'm getting pretty old, so <laughs> uh, so uh, you know, I, I'll try. But if, if 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 something happens to me in the meantime, just be ready to to, to get somebody else in there. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Well, we'll we'll make we'll make sure that we're well equipped. Um, so anyway, so let's, yeah, let's get this thing going, shall we? Um, and, uh, so I call this meeting to order. We have, we have quorum. Um, are there any members of the public present that want to weigh in? There are not. Okay. All right. Uh, with that, we'll move on to approving the minutes from our last meeting. Um, Perry, thank you so much for sending those this morning. No, no problem. Um, that was great. So, um, I'm not sure who all has had a, Chance to look at them. Yeah, uh, a little they behind your, schedule. Okay, <laughs> they should be in your in your um, in boxes. Yeah, but nothing surprising in there. Um, and so I'll make them. I'll make a motion to to approve those minutes. Second. All in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Aye. Okay, so moved. All right, excellent. Um, thanks again, Perry, for sending this out. Um, good. So yes, yeah, so we actually we came away a lot with the last meeting with a, a, a lot of interesting kind of directions to go in, um, and I think the 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 rest of this one was just to kind of you know keep momentum moving um, and really kind of to to make sure that our solar project is is still still moving on, uh, but also try to hopefully kind of seize the momentum to do some other really cool stuff in town. Um, which, uh, which we'll talk about. Um, but um, yeah, I, I think we might as well just kind of, you know, talk about kind of where the solar project is since that's kind of you know, where, where most of the momentum is um, at the moment. Um, so I can just report uh, quickly that what I know, um, I spoke with Matt um, a couple of times, he corresponded by email and, um, and uh, la last week or week before the, the planning committee uh, planning board uh, met, um, and the kind of encore rep uh, was on the on the line. Um, and basically, the, you know, the planning board, you know, I guess you know, gave gave the uh, the town the green light, um, you know, to to continue, you know, kind of developing the project, which is which is great. Um, I'm not sure who else was on the call, uh, but there weren't too many tough questions. Mostly just like people doing their due diligence, you know, you know, making sure they ask some questions. Yeah. Um, but the call with the planning thanks. board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wasn't on the call, um, but my husband is on the planning board. So, <laughs> what do you say, the planning board, Sam? Or are you talking about the the council? No, the planning board. Oh, okay. Right. It was a, yeah. it was a workshop, right? So they don't they don't vote or anything. It's they ask questions and give direction. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they were just asking questions. Um, so it's, not like a, it's not like an approval yet. It's just they, they you talked about it, right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah, maybe Carrie, you may know more about the, the process, of the planning board, actually. Um, uh, I, I, I only know what I've heard from Andrew, and so, but it, they have workshops, and then they have like uh, more like hearings. Mm -hmm. and, and at the workshops, my understanding is it's it's kind of like the workshop we had with the town council, 
Mm -hmm. They're just asking questions and trying to understand. And then at a later time, there would be like a formal vote for approval. Uh -huh. what, they use, what they use the workshops for in the planning is to ask is to ask questions, but they also give direction. They'd say, to get approval, we want you to, we'd like to see this in the study's impact, mm -hmm. flesh out what the final package is gonna look like for their approval. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's Got right. It. Yeah, yeah, so it was, it, was, it, was, it was that sort of thing. And for example, they wanted to um, get a slightly different, um, I think drawing for the schematic that kind of showed where the trails were. Um, that was kind of one of the requests they had, but um, but certainly there were there there were no kind of you know poison pills in there. Um, and then uh, Matt reports out that on the contracting side, um, what we uh, can we we uh, Sam and and Tom uh, kind of you know, looked at the contract, gave us some some comments, and um, uh, Matt took those, and so Matt and the Encore uh, team have been you know, kind of you know banging out that um, the contract, or I guess there are two contracts, one for the land lease, another for the PPA. Um, and so I think, you know, Sam, uh, Matt is optimistic that um, they'll be able to get that ready in time for the October um, town council meeting. Um, and I, I hope we can get a chance to see kind of that final, um, but, um, you know, I would, I would, we're in touch with, with, with Matt um, regularly. And I would suspect if there were some real pushback that that um, that he got, um, that were you know pushing back on some of kind of what we proposed um, in terms of revisions, would, that we would hear about that. I would sort of think that the you know we should get a copy of that. I would think from the town council, you approved it. What do you think of the contract? I'd at least ask for the energy committee's opinion mm -hmm. on that on the final docs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll, 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 I'll mention that, that, um, you know, we would, we would kindly, you know, request to have a chance to review those before they went to the town council. Have they established a schedule? What's the schedule so, uh, in, ter in terms of the, um, the oh. development? So yeah, that was actually one of the questions that came up on the um, planning board. Um, and uh, I, yeah, I was actually, I was a little surprised to hear that they were anticipating that maybe even further, um, you know, pushback even even further than that um, that we had been discussing, um, which I think was a function primarily of the interconnection process, um, the utility utilities kind of being being backed up with the queue. Yeah, um, but I think one thing I think one thing it, it's critical. There's the interconnection queue, but there's also to make sure that the town council doesn't think they defer it. We sign the contract with them, they can place the order and it's about qualifying for this year's tax credits regardless mm -hmm. of wherever. So we have to keep that in the front of the mind of the council that they don't say, oh, you know, it's because of interconnection, we're gonna be longer, we can deal with this later. We mm -hmm. want the contract, everything's signed off by this year. And what about the net metering issue? Um, I know Sam, you mentioned that the, um, there was a lot of net metering projects in this in the yeah. territory, well, and, um, yeah. are, are we in any danger? In no, no, I'll tell you why. Um, the the auction was a pathetic loser. <laughs> it why just fell that? on its face, and um, bas basically they rejected. There were eight bids, I believe, and they rejected the bids. They're all up to like twenty cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, uh, they, they felt there was a little coercion going on there, but anyway, some of the the, the issue was. Let me back into this thing because it, it's obviously not exactly answering your question. But what happened with the auction was they didn't allow enough. Uh, they made it so onerous for most of the participants because they had to have interconnection all that to get into the auction that they just basically a few got in there and the the, the numbers were way too high for anybody. So they just threw up their hands and they just basically canceled the auction for now, which means that all we have left is net metering. So right now, net metering is it's 30%, it's probably above 30% of load at CMP right now. And nobody's <laughs> saying a, a word about it at this point because we really don't have another program to go to right now. So there's not a concern that they're gonna cap out the number of participants in the net metering program 
this well, time. there's always a concern, but remember, right now, they don't have a solution for the 375 megawatts that they were supposed to put on auction, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, it's, it is, you know, Carrie, I understand your angst or my angst about it because it's like one of those things that hang over your head all the time, and there's no definite, no definite saying, you know, when we're going to cut it off, when we're not going to cut it off. The other thing that's been going on is that um, – uh, the uh, people up in um, uh, the uh, the Versant people have caused. Well, let me put it this way: uh, uh, when they when they were in Mira, they did very little to do interconnection studies. Uh, the first three studies came out totally in the last couple of weeks, which means they're way the heck behind in even that process. And um, as far as Versant was concerned, they are now causing a lot of issues on the interconnection costs. They're, they basically hired a, a consultant from Boston, and I've talked to people at NextGrid and some others, and they're getting million-dollar bills for, wow. for, for mile interconnection reconducting. Jeez. And they're, they're all going to MPUC. It's become a, a virtual little mess out there. So right now, um, all I'm saying is that there are some net metering here at CMP seems to be going very, very well. And everything else is kind of, you know, running around, everybody's running around trying to figure out what they're going to do for everything else around here. As far as well, the rest good of the for us, because that's what we're doing, net metering. Yeah, yeah it is. It <laughs> really <laughs> is. Yeah, no, so it looks good. But again, I think there is there's definitely there is definitely some recent growing pains that the MPUC is going to have to have to deal with at this point. And it's right in here, so there's no concern about about schedule and getting into this year's tax breaks. True? Yeah, I mean, that the schedule in terms of that didn't come up. I mean, yeah, Matt up. is kind of yeah. shoot, is aiming to have the contract, you know, approved by October uh, at the October uh, town council meeting. And so if that's the case, and I would suspect that would give, you know, you give us, you know, the town time to I mean, pursue any other steps that are required to kind of, you know, to, uh, to get the think, project. I think that's that, the point Tom was making, right? Is that, that we do need the town council to approve the contract at the meeting in October because that approval will allow Encore to make the investments they need in order to qualify for the ITC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they can, they can make that safe harbor yeah. um, investment. Yeah, mm -hmm. or worse no, or worse no, or worse November. But you know, I think we tried to build a little bit of excess into the schedule. But we should remind the town about that. Yeah, that October is is you know we can't, we we definitely need to make that that uh, that date. Yeah, uh, that that it's like you, that's that's the date or that's why they, that we need to make it is for this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. ability to make the investment for the ITC. Yeah. Well, yeah. It may be worth reminding Matt next time we, that um, that we speak with him that 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 is important that we have we 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 get the contract you know ready and approved you know at that at that at that town council meeting um, to keep things moving. Um, he may understand that at some level, but it's it's worth reminding him. Um, I and think uh, that Encore should be reminding them too. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> yeah, Encore should because be they're still on the hook for it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I know that um, that we 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 can we've offered multiple times to you know, help them project manage this to make sure good things go smoothly and seamlessly, and that there is like not a single moment of hesitation, um, just in terms of the logistical aspects of making this all happen. Um, and, and Matt's always been very polite and says, okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll let you know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it, it, does, it doesn't, doesn't hurt to kind of proactively um, you know, make suggestions that, that we think will come, you know, streamline things. Um, and uh, so, yeah, and, and, and just, you know, he always, it's, it's funny, um, he's, he's effusive in his praise for our committee. Uh, and our, 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 our accomplishment to bring this together. So um, anyway, he's like literally every single time we, we speak, he kind of gushes over us. So should all be very proud for making that impression. Um, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that he understands kind of, you know, that why we think it's important, why, why we know it's important. Uh, the, in the October council meeting, um, they make that happen. 
Um, and then um, and another thing we've mentioned with him, and Sam, you can, um, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to you, is about the, um, you know, kind of what sort of kind of, you know, uh, kind of interim program can we tap into uh, that will allow us to kind of to, to, to use um, an offsite solar farm um, to, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to buy power for the town uh, at, a, at a good rate. Um, and Sam, were you able to have, did you give me any kind of additional, you know, updates? Uh, no, I actually uh, want a little topic. more, I want a little more, um, go ahead with the committee. It won't be a problem. Um, yeah, it, first of all, as you know, Matt is just says, fine, there's no issue yeah. here, obviously. We just want to say, they just want to save money. Why would it be an issue? Um, but, um, what I wanted to, to, there's, there's two things I want to, I, with your permission, uh, ask, um, uh, Charlie yeah, or whomever in that group, because he's offered. Um, does everybody know what they offered, by the way? With, have, I, did I, have I talked about this at all? I don't even, you know. Maybe we got an email about it. But yeah, can, okay. So let me just briefly, let me just briefly go over it, okay? Basically, um, Char Charlie uh, uh, Agnes said that, okay, um, we have a, 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 a group out of Scarborough who is building a solar farm and it's going to give you a, a, a smoking deal, basically. Who's Charlie? Char Charlie Agnew with, with uh, competitive. It, it, Carrie, who is this guy? You like, you like these people, right? Charlie, no, I, Charlie. I, I'm not going to say that in front of Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think that it sounds like the people you're talking to are doing good work. I, I yeah. have competitive but, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but there, there are, are power, there are power let me just tell you uh, Richard, basically there are people who put together pretty much all these bids for all these large companies and the consortium well, the consortium they, they they get a lot of um uh developers together for the bidding process and they handle all of that and they seem to have a uh, developer who is who would give us pretty much as much a smoking deal as i've seen the problem basically, of course, we all have to ask them to ask the questions when they're going to build. Who's they? Who's they? Is it a company? Is it a, it's a company? It's a developer. It's a developer, yeah. It's, it's well, Direct Energy, I believe, is the name of the company. Well, no, Direct Energy is your third party provider. Oh, uh, yeah. This is, this is Competitive Energy Services. Right? Uh, that's right. It's I'm competitive sorry. Energy Services. Um, uh, it's a developer that works with Competitive Energy Services. So, so okay. Competitive Energy Services is basically brokering the deal and they have a developer who has a project. Yeah, and, and basically, obviously, they're the ones that wanted to broker the Rex too with a situation like this. But yeah, and the, and they, basically the numbers he talked about were um, south of nine cents a uh, kilowatt hour, plus we would keep the Rex. Oh, well that's So that's kind of, that is kind of a smoking deal to do whatever we want with them. Um, and of course, the, uh, so that would that would put us in the category of probably any of the bids that ever came through the state. The only thing that I haven't really approached them about is, okay, is this a brand new development? When would this get built? Is this going to do us? You know, what, when what, what is the effective date of of when it's going to uh, be online? So that was one thing. Plus, we don't know the developer at this point either, so we haven't vetted the developer. But that was, but that that's just kind of a sidebar because we were thinking as a group, I think, that we needed to supplement our, our energy. We were not covering it all with our transfer station that we need to do something about that as well. So right. since this deal, would this deal um, be as a bridge until the transfer station project is online or is this um, like a longer term deal to, to purchase the rest of the town's demand? It, it wasn't defined to me, but this is what I told Charlie. I said, first of all, if it was a bridge, then it would have to be built, you know, before this okay. one does, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so I said, that would be great if we had a solar farm that was in that category, I, some of the solar farms that are being built, maybe a couple of being built this year or the first part of next year. Um, but I said also, um, we, we need to consider the idea that, that we, we have also not just a bridge, but we also have to deal with the energy we can't 
get out of the solar farm we have now, right? So what is it, 50% of the energy that we, we are consuming is gonna still be left over? Uh, maybe a little less than that, a little less than that. But the point is that there's, there's two things we're looking at. We're looking at uh, getting a total package for now, if we get an early, um, an early developer, and, and, the, and a supplemental package, even when we build our farm, right? When we have our farm built, when they're, when they're when, so that's, that's, there's two phases to this thing, right? And, and the other thing is, so the problem becomes, the, the, the think the problem out here, um, let's say that we had a, a company or companies who will say, the developer says, okay, we'll give you energy We'll be able to give you energy by, let's say, uh, second quarter of next year, okay? And we won't be able to build a farm maybe for another six months or a year. Um, and we supply you with all the energy you need, period, besides. The question is, uh, and I've talked to uh, a couple people, are you going to relent at that point or give us, uh, or, or, or back off your demands or, or the amount of energy we're consuming um, with when our farm comes online, and that becomes a little problematic to a couple of people already. All right, so that's that, those are problems we have to work through, uh, and and just kind of add one more thing to that. That can be remedied by some of the contracts that I've seen where there is, there are, some of them are as, are as low as six month termination um, clauses. So and some are a year. So we can work all that out, but I think there's a, there's a couple. Um, there's a couple approaches to this thing that we have to look at. And I think the idea of, of Charlie having, you know, a, a particular developer at a smoking price is only one of the things that we, we, we have to consider, you know, in, in lieu of everything we have to do here. Yeah. That makes sense. And I know we've kind of wondered uh, previously about, you know, if our current contract allows us to go out and kind of, and, and do this kind of parallel deal, but from, from what um, I think I've, I've come to learn is that that doesn't matter because we're not changing our current rank contract. Right, right. so the, right. the initial, the, it, 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 in the same call that I have with him, and that was, that was uh, Perry asked me to do this because he had nothing else to do and he was wanting <laughs> to go home and eat donuts. Um, um, basically, the, the, that was the initial question and, the, and it, kind of, it kind of morphed into this thing about another developer. So the, the, as far as they were concerned, uh, competitive said direct energy has, has nothing to do with this. We're fine. You do not violate our contract. Everything is fine. Okay. As far as they're concerned. Mm -hmm. So how, how long are the contracts that people are looking to sign roughly? Are we talking about the uh, a new uh, a new solar contract? Are we talking about the contract we have with Direct Energy now for 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 uh, or one when you might one we might be considering with Competitive Energy Services or something like that? A new contract? What are they looking okay. for? Okay, well, all contracts are in the NAB are standard twenty year contracts. Okay, but the the uh, most not most a lot of the contracts have termination clauses. Feet. So basically, effectively. Some of them are, let's say, a year, really, and and you have the twenty-year guarantee if you want to move on. But you also can can opt out in a certain period of time, and that would, of course, solve our problem with you know backing somebody out uh, from part of the energy costs that we uh, the energy consumption. Uh, are, are we? Is our demand big enough that we're you know? Uh, in terms of what kind of pricing we're going to get, in terms of what we're bidding out, is it big enough to, to demand? Where where are we on the on the size scale in terms of bidding for these kinds of contracts? And, you know, and it seems like we're sort of small, medium size overall in the large in this big scheme of things. Well, what they look for, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, I'm sure that we. Um, it, it, that's why this deal was quite surprising, um, but. Um, I can tell you right now, a lot of the contracts are based on this. There's this, this two functions that we, we look at as developers when we price something out, okay? One function obviously is, is, is basically the consumption, okay? And the other one is also based on consumption, but it's really the size of the service because that's the type of um, tariff rate, the size of the tariff rate we're gonna get, 
So for instance, though it reverses itself, a large, a large service CMP tariff is higher than a small or a medium service as far as the tariff rates are concerned, okay? So it's, a, it's two functions, but they're kind of the same, okay? And, and obviously, when you have a company like, I'll, I'll give you, for instance, um, a Hancock Lumber does in one of the sawmills almost 9 million kilowatt hours a year, okay? <coughs> we're not even near there, but we're not that small either because we still have, even with our solar farm, Perry, we have probably a, a half a megawatt still left over, don't we? Or at least that much. If I yeah. remember right, yeah. Yeah, so that's still okay. That's pretty okay size. We're gonna get, we'll get some good numbers out of that. Sam, a quick question about this potential um, kind of smoking hot deal, as you put it. What would, in, what would incentivize that developer to offer a smoking hot deal? At this point? I mean, when, is, it seems like it's below market. You know, like they're, they're you, know, I, you know, I can't even, without talking to these people or yeah. us talking to these people, I, I can't answer that question. All I can, t I can tell you one thing though, um, I, there are enough projects out there where people are a little bit antsy about getting in enough subscribers mm. at this point. Um, uh, again, and, and again, we have to go back to what if the NEB allocations continue and how far they continue. But, but for the most part, there are a lot of projects out there coming on board. And, and I, I know the, the deal people I'm working with, um, they're looking to do business. Got it. So, so next step on that, then I mean, I'm guessing, right, Sam, is to, I mean, with, with the committee's permission to kind of, you know, you know big, to engage them and kind of learn more about this this particular um, project and if it can, if you can actually tap into it, you know. More than that, Sam, I I, th I think that's that's great. But more than that, I hope everybody agrees with this. We need to start looking at the people either who are bidding or other people to see what else is out there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, it, it would, it would be, I, I'm not going to go into procedure because everybody can decide that as well as I can, but we obviously have, we have had eight bidders and they all have given us their background already. So mm -hmm. it would be a lot simpler to ask that question, uh, or, put a fa or, or, or uh, pose a question or pose an RFP or whatever you want to do, a proposal and ask them for, for their input on this on this does that make sense yeah no i think that does i mean you know i guess the question is like you know does this create a need which isn't necessarily a bad thing but do we have to go through the rfp process um you know in which i mean maybe i guess rfps are good because you kind of you know you get a sense of what people are able to offer and yeah. cover, you know, compare apples to apples um versus just kind of you know asking one developer but yeah i mean I mean, well, hey, if it doesn't if it doesn't slow things down too much, I say, you know, we can do a little, you know, mini RFP, right? It doesn't need yeah, to. Yeah, I don't. Th I don't think it will because because we, you know, I don't think that the majority of the first wave of farms are going to get built even this year. Mm. Okay? And some of those have been taken already. I'm thinking that, given the weather, we're looking at the first real wave of farms going what second quarter, early second quarter of next year. And so I think we got the time to do it. And I think, I think we all, and I, as I say, it's an it's easier process. And of course, looking at the town the way it is, this is not uh, a place like Rockland where they just decide to do something without an RFP, okay? I'm sorry to say it that way, or Cumberland. We, we have a, a, we have a, a council who likes to, likes to do things according to good documentation. So yeah, I think yeah. we need to need to stick to that particular thing, and, and go from there. But that again, anybody can can jump in here. I'm just talking through my hat no, I, here. I, I think you're know. right, Sam. I think we need to we need to make sure we're getting the best smoking deal out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for different reasons. Yeah, because again, yeah. Carrie, these people could be just you know you know, relative fly by night nice compared to what we vetted already, you know, and again, they may not be building this farm until after, you know, any sooner than we are. So yeah, they can, they can, we can, they can be invited to enter the process. 
Um, we know what, uh, what what Charlie's looking for. He's told me he's looking for a brokerage fee and he's looking for to do, and, 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 and you'll love this, he's looking to broker the Rex, right? That's what he's so looking he wants for. To sell the Rex. Yeah, of course, of course. Um, so, you know, that may not be in our next phase. So we need to, we need to keep it in our terms. My question on this one is, you know, when the town did its, you know, procurement with direct energy for electricity, what process did they go through? Because it's more analogous to that. Mm -hmm. You know, the landfill is a little bit different because you've got um, issues with working on the landfill, the town's behind it, it's town property. You know, what's the process been for, you know, contracting for other electricity? And that's probably what we should follow. Eric, right, can you speak to that? I cannot. It was done before my time. Yeah. The, 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 the other thing we should have in mind is, if, um, Perry, is do we have a view on what we expect the electricity usage to be? Do we expect it to be more or less in five years? Because there are some energy saving things we might do that might drive it down. And there are some electrification things you might do with vehicles and other stuff that might drive it up. Um, but it, it would be worth having a view as we go into, if you're going into energy procurement over a long period, over a long long-term yeah. contract. Mm. Yeah, I mean, my expectation is that it's going down. I mean, just this summer we replaced, I'll say 98% of the lighting in the high school with LED lighting through a state grant. Um, oh, so, cool. You know, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're chipping away at it pretty much every year. That's great. And, and there's some, there's some weird feedback. I'm sure there's a speaker that someone has, but anyway, I, I every now and then I hear odd voices, <laughs> not just in my head. I thought um, that was you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. No one's, no one's, I have my dog in, in here. I think we've room. all been on mute. Yeah. I thought it was you too, Sam. <laughs> oh, really? No, it's not me. Unless I'm doing something really weird. Um, no, it's just, just me and my dog. <laughs> and she's quiet. She's napping. Any, anyway, um, but on that point, Perry, you made me think, and maybe we can pick this up a little bit later, but that would be a great sort of, um, uh, you know, bit of news to share with the town. I mean, as, as far as kind of the you know, community engagement part of our, of our kind of mandate is, um, yeah, t telling the town about, hey, you know, we were able to get the state grant and replace 98% of our, of our inefficient light bulbs. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I went over it at a board meeting, a school board meeting, but it was so overshadowed by COVID and air quality and, you know, all the negative that going on in the world that the positive just completely got missed. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> well, we can, I, I'll, I'll, we, we can, we can table kind of our, our citizen outreach um, efforts until a little bit later. But I think it's an important thing that we should, we should, yeah. we should be. Uh, Along those lines, there's things like um, there was a proposal earlier that didn't come through the Energy Committee, but it was to uh, purchase the lighting. It's sort of a little bit of a race. It was like a three hundred thousand dollar proposal. It had like a, but it had like a, just a few year payback. It would be yeah. something I'd love the Energy Committee to look at and rec and consider recommending. Whoa. Um, well, we thought that was going to be. It was before you joined, John. We thought yeah. that was going to be our first big project, <laughs> and then we realized it was already on. It was already underway, so we. Well, <laughs> we, it, it, we understand it's still available. It's sort of a race for who's going to buy them. Yeah, I, I don't know where that project stands right now. I I, I think it's stalled for whatever reason. Hmm. Hey, well, John, once you find out, would you find out about it? I mean, it, yeah, no, I can run it down. I can run it down. I would just think it would be something that we could basically put in front of the committee, do a workup, and do a recommendation. Um, it's one of those things like, you know, particularly if, if you're, you know, if, you, if you're doing it, thinking about bonding out uh, energy saving projects, well, you know, like the, like the solar buyout, um, you, you, you pile in as much as you want, if it's cash flow positive, it works out. Bonding is great. <laughs> Could, would this be a good moment to segue to a, a discussion about Kind of the an ESCO sort of arrangement, and how can we take advantage of the energy efficiency opportunities in town? Um, and on that point, Barbara, I know you sent me an email, a couple emails, and I 
regret that we haven't gotten back. So I'm happy to start addressing any questions that people might have as we talk about this. Okay, thanks. Yeah, are we all done with the state with the solar conversation for now, Sam? Are, 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 have, you, have you got everything off your chest that you need to? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. The only thing is, at some point, I don't want to bite off this time, but we we actually talk about the actual outreach for the solar side too at some point. Okay. Yeah. For the community. And, and let's just just so we can finish that, you know, kind of finish this up. So we should. I think I, I hear Tom recommending, and I make, it makes sense. Basically, follow the same process that we did when we signed our direct energy contract um and kind of you know if we need to kind of do something else you know to supplement our solar then we should basically follow that model so we need to figure out what that model is and kind of what sort of so so matt sturgis i don't think was here when the direct energy contract was signed either so uh, yeah we, we may want to follow a process that he's more familiar with i don't know what the pro I, I don't know that we're necessarily wedded to the old process but it, it is a procurement process and whatever that is currently we should think about so don't we have a procurement uh, uh, buyer? Don't we have a buyer, a town buyer, uh, the person who buys equipment in town? We don't. That would have been a logical place to start. Okay. <laughs> Since that direct energy co contract was was signed, we have a, we have a, a new, you know Perry is new, Matt is new, the director of finance is new. So yeah, um, we may have a better process available. So, uh, yeah, but again, I mean, it, it, in, in lieu of what Tom says, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, I don't think what we have in place, especially if we're using some of the same people we have, we don't have to go through that whole process. We, do, we should at least think about what kind of wording we're using, okay, at this point, and what we really want. I think that's the first thing. Whatever process we use from there is fine, and there must be something, is there something written down somewhere as to how you buy things? Period. There's I mean, a there's a there's a small policy written on. You know, if I want to go out and spend ten thousand dollars on something, I just gotta go get a couple prices on it and then run it by the town manager. It's um, pretty pretty simplified on paper how it gets done. Okay. The, um, you know, like with the with the electrical contract we have, you know that would that would be something that most likely would just be done through me and go out through Charlie. Why not? I, I believe that's how it was done with my predecessor, that it went out through Charlie and Charlie puts it out to bid. Right. But so it, he it became your it. broker in this case, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and that's how I use them as my, uh, for oil and propane right now on an annual basis as well. Hmm. But that way I have the documentation to show the town that you know, we had X amount of bidders and, and this was the price that we got, so. Should we just go through or can we just go through Charlie for this to kind of broker, you know, an additional, you know, power contract for us with, with the solar provider? Um, I know yeah, brokers I mean, take a piece, but. That, that, you know, that would be my guess. I would just want to confirm that before we, you know, before I say yes to it. Hmm. But it, yeah, that's just a simple conversation with Matt. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He'll probably, the thing is that, that look, uh, in, in deference to Charlie or anybody else doing this, we've done it on our own pretty well. I think what, what, what Tom is suggesting, it makes a lot of sense and we keep it internally. I'm not as comfortable going out to Charlie for doing this at this point. He's really duplicating the stuff we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're very capable of doing it. I think all we need is some good guidelines. If they're not there in the first place, we've still got a mechanism in place. I, I, I'm going to suggest that it might be worthwhile to, to plan to have a meeting with Matt or somebody or, and or the finance director um, to take us through this because a number of things we're considering is going to try and just try to dovetail with procurement and contracting processes. And we're not sure what those are. And they're relatively big, take, you know, sizable items um, that also could be beneficial to the town so having a presentation that says okay we're gonna we want to follow this process we're gonna need these inputs and you know to and you can uh, make it easy for their process to say okay our recommendation from this committee comes through with all the pieces that you need to fold right into your procurement process your contracting process mm -hmm. Well, it's funny. I mean, when, when we had spoken with, with, um, with Matt uh, maybe a few weeks ago and kind of mentioned this, 
Uh, he was like, sounds great. Let's just, just, you know, just get it done, basically. Um, he didn't seem to be too worried about the procurement process. That was kind of the, the, the vibe I'd gotten from him. Um, well, you had some credibility, Sam, that's why. <laughs> um, and so, but I, 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 but I do agree with the, the argument that let's just run it by him. Very simple question. Do you have a procurement, even though we might know the answer already, do you have a procurement process in place for something like, and we'll define what it is. Let's define exactly on paper what we're talking about here. We're talking about a couple of different things. And if there is, we like to be involved. We like to, to use that as a guideline. If you don't, we can, we can, we can create our own situation. Okay. Can we simplify, is there, can we simplify this? You know, is, is Encore a, an option here for topping off the, the rest of 40% that we'd Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. In, in one of their offers, they were offering seven cents a kilowatt. Yeah. To top it off. Okay, first of all, the, the, the one thing, I mean, uh, uh, pr promoting Encore for one reason is that they're going to be one of the early builders of farms, okay, for sure. Um, and so is Next Grid, by the way. But, but at the same time, um, I wouldn't be, a, that, when I've talked to them at some point, they had, they're one of the companies that had some angst about backing off once they once they built the farm, in other words, they they want if, if we they want to even though they're building this farm for us or for themselves, they don't they they're seeing some problem in um, once the farm is built, uh, having to sell the, that that energy to someone else that they've already subscribed to us for the total amount of our consumption. So so that just led me to believe that maybe we need to include other people in this process too, even just from an intelligence point of view. Well, the significance of the money we're going to save or lose is, going to, is a function of what their schedule is. And if their schedule is going to come online in six months from the beginning of the year, then we've got a six months delta that we're dealing with. If it's longer, then of course the gap, you know, so we may not be losing that much than just having them provide the top off once their farm is built and not have to worry about what we're, what we're doing in the interim. Well, well Richard, much money we're saving. Here, here's, the, here's the issue, and I think, I think we've, we've kind of tried to address it a little bit. We're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not down the road really well with this thing yet, right, obviously. And we're going to have a hard time building it next year. Real hard time. Mm -hmm. There will be farms that are being built by the middle of the year where we're talking six months or more probably. And this is a guess. I agree, but it's a guess based on a lot of things I know about already, all right? And so what we're, what we're, what we're looking for is somebody who is building early and that, be, that will qualify certain people, that, that's why part of our vetting process, who will give us a rate in which we can obviously, we, we, we will, that we can obviously live with and we like, and can do what we want to do when we build our farm, which will probably will be I think we'll probably, if I guessed, we're probably going to save six months or more of electricity by doing that. Okay, and that's a guess because there's a lot of factors to this stuff. All right, that's six months of the delta we're paying now and what the tariff would be, right? Right, right, yeah. So we're, not, we're not saving all the energy; we're just saving the delta. Well, no, we could be saving all the energy. That's one of the, see, that's what we have to write down and we have to decide together this, okay? We're, we're, there's one proposal that says that one part of it says we are going to be supplementing what we would normally have because we're always gonna supplement that, right? Because that could be a 20 year contract because we'll never be touching that. Or we're gonna take the entire consumption where at some point that will have the, the company who is going to be supplying that entire consumption is going to have to back off and we build at least the amount of energy that we're utilizing from our own solar farm. All right. So one of the sides of it, to put it in a kind of a scorecard here, one of it may, a part of it, a big chunk of it will be for the six months or, or even more. And the second part will be a 20 year deal. which is the, one, the part that we're not utilizing in the first place from our solar farm. 
So again, that's why we have to write this down and go, what do we want? What are we presenting? What are we asking for here? Sam, can I compel you to be the, the, the scribe and can write all this down? And, um, you know, so we can, so we can, you know, know at least kind of, you know, that we're, what we're asking for. And then, you know, we can kind of review it together, maybe as a group or just kind of, or at least, or take that to Matt. Um, so he understands exactly what we're, what we're trying to accomplish here. Well, we, we also, I think we, 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 the first step is we have to agree on this as a group. I mean, I mean, whether I think it's a good idea or not, doesn't mean everybody else thinks it's a good idea. Um, and then we bring to Matt, um, what, what, and I'll, I'll write something down for sure. Okay. It's of what I just said. Mm -hmm. Okay. But, um, that would be, that would be that definitely have to get it down and I'll, I'll do that. Of course. And then, then we include Charlie at some point if you want to as yeah. well. Should we have a little, a little, little vote to, um, you know, on, on, on this, on this issue? I mean, um, uh, I'm, I'm in favor of at least exploring this and seeing kind of what else, what, what other mechanisms there are to, you know, to, to get the town cheaper power, especially if it's solar, you know, with Rex. Um, I mean, that's brilliant, but um, that would be me. Anybody, anybody have any, any kind of, um, any thoughts to the contrary? Oh, I, I think it's, I think it's definitely worth exploring, but we should think about, you know, depending on what the actual deals are that we find if mm -hmm. it's worthwhile to commit the town to this deal or we think it's better to wait for something better in the future so yeah um but it's certainly worth exploring now i think um and just finding out what's out there um i do think we should try to to have as competitive a process as we can so i, I don't think that there's a huge advantage to getting more power with encore if someone else can give it to us for less money. Right. Uh, so. Well, and it sounds like that even though the long-term contracts, the, the cancellation periods aren't all that long. So it's not, it's not that big a commitment. Oh yeah. Yeah. That, that is interesting. So yeah. Figuring out, understanding the terms and the pricing. Combined. John, that's exactly, Carrie, that's exactly it. So part of the conditions we're looking for are uh, availability, uh, termination, uh, part of our decision-making process, as well as price. And, and so, and they, they do differ, all of these differ. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah. The, the, the other thing I was thinking too is, I, I think the market's gonna continue to move for a while. And to the extent that it is, you may want to consider doing something as long as you, you know, you, you can give a longer cancellation period if you split up your, your buys. If you buy half your power today with a two-year cancellation and half your power in another year with a two-year cancellation, it's sort of dollar cost average and you're back in the market every year with half your power need. You'd be a great commodities guy, but John, this is this is the only this is the only problem with that is, is that solar farms end up selling their subscriptions. They're going to try to sell as much as they can. So it's likely, at least according to the plan, first of all, they have to because they won't get built otherwise. So it's likely- You don't, you don't have to rebuild. I'm just saying you can. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you, you, you've got that termination possibilities to do that. Um, and uh, that's fine. I don't, I don't know what else we can do. I think that we're, I think, what, look, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a good deal out of this thing. All right. One way or another. Um, there's a lot of competition out there. I pretty much know what the pricing is going on now and it's becoming, as I say, there's a lot of capacity that's being, uh, that's being spoken for here. So, or being uh, spoken for being put out there for a bit and, and people are jumping, climbing all over each other at this point. Okay. So this is really the time. Do I know what the future is going to hold? I wish I did, uh, but I, I, I have a feeling that again, the, the, the these these projects have to get built. They've got to sell out as fast as they can, and it's likely that two years down the road, we're not going to see unless the allocations get really bumped up. We're not going to see another wave or two of this stuff. Remember, also, Maine has you know this is not like Massachusetts or some of the urban states. 
Maine has a limited amount of uh, flow, okay? Mm -hmm. And that's been a concern the people I work with, and I'm sure it's a concern with any one of these developers that there's a point where this thing's going to be tapped out. So anyway. Doesn't the load go into the ISO, into the, um, exactly. the, the ISO region? Or is it just the main only it's market? A, it's, a, it's a main market. It's, a, it's okay. a, your distribution level. This okay. is not an ISO project. So, so if you were building a project for ISO, that's a different story. Um, and I think Tom knows this, you, you'll get a certain size project, you're going on the transmission system, you go into the ISO, into the, their queue, which is a different queue, and you can sell anywhere in New England. This is, a, this is a specific program. Remember, the incentive is based on main sales. Yeah. yeah. So otherwise, it kind of throws it all away. I mean, we have, we have our projects. My, my investors have 30 megawatt projects in Maine right now. They're selling into ISO at four or five cents a kilowatt hour. There's no incentive besides that, but they're based on scale. Got it. Okay. Well, I think I think our, our, our the the task for this is just kind of you know elucidate on paper, okay, you know what we're trying to accomplish, kind of you know with this uh, with yeah. with, a, with a, sh a short term, um, or longer term kind of you know contract, um, and then and kind of you know, and take it take it to Matt and say this is what we want, you know, kind of what what's the what process, you know, you know, do you need, uh, you know, for us to get the, get here. Um, and so maybe I propose Sam you kind of you make some notes and then we can you know, all take a look at it and then next time we talk with Sam or with that uh, with Matt um, just present that um, I know in, I know in, in, in principle he's very excited about the idea uh, but I think it, yeah we should make sure that we get the best deal and that we you know kind of we are, are at least kind of you know doing whatever sort of vetting um, of different you know uh, projects and developers and whatnot um, you know as cleanly as possible so uh, when we say the best deal, I, honestly, I think a number of them are likely to be relatively close. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm, as, I'm as interested as well in the, the, the provider's um, service accounting, you know, reliability. Um, and, and not, you know, if, it were, if they're within a few set, you know, fractions of a set of each other, I, I don't think that's actually a big deal because mm -hmm. the, the, the savings over the standard offer is still be significant. And John, I think we've, we've, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that's what we always looked at in, in our, in our, we've been very consistent with our other projects. So I think if we go down the same road, uh, we're going to be very safe and it's going to work really well for us. I also, you know, I, in the back of my mind, maybe this doesn't even enter into it. I, I'd like to, 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 to leave some sort of legacy that says, we're not going to look at our watch in two or three years down the road. We still don't have a, a project or, or a year down the road. And people say to us, well, what happened to the savings that you were doing? Okay. So I like the idea of, of supplementing this thing as soon as we can and, and, and bringing in, uh, bringing in some, some savings for us. Yeah, I think we can all agree on that. The, the, the nice thing about the, 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 the fill, you know, the project with the, um, additional, you know, buying additional capacity, is that can happen, go online and savings can accrue relatively quickly. I mean, they'll start showing up in, in town budget soon if we act soon. You're right there, is that what you wanted? You were talking about the other part of it too which was about what is our consumption really going to look like? And so we need to kind of think about that a little bit, how we approach that. Um, maybe somebody's going to have to make some predictions at, uh, at some point here. Um, you know, we've already, uh, uh, Perry's already talked about the lighting thing in the high school. I, I, and um, we also have to look at the consumption based on what we have going here. This, you know, this is so tricky right now, right? Um, so I, I think uh, we got to think about that a little bit as well, because as you, as you said before, you know, I'm thinking straight line. Okay. We got 2000 kilowatt hours, uh, 2000, excuse me, two megawatts and we're using 1.5, 1.4 megawatts. Well, we need 0.6, we need six tenths of it. We need 600 kilowatts now. Well, maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's not exactly like that either. 
Yeah. So think about how flexible the people are who are going to supply us as well. And that could be the, the year termination thing. Uh, lot, every company here, by the way, has always offered to be as flexible as possible. All these developers have said, you can go down this for a year and you can reassess it and we will adjust it for you. But again, there's always a problem as to whether they're gonna have the capacity or, or, or be able to sell you more capacity. So it's a little tricky, it's, you know, go ahead, I'm sorry. Perry, just a thought, does the town have any um, use essentially for excess power that's, that's valuable? I mean, sometimes, for example, you know, depending on where you are, uh, when there's big differences in time of use rates, people will, will, will shift power around to, you know, cool off buildings or heat up buildings or, you know, move, have run out of their water pumps at night instead of during the daytime. Um, those, I mean, uh, there was, there's an application I saw that basically that uh, only bought super cheap power to move to move water around irrigation um, in California hmm. saved a ton of money because they were all electric pumps. Um, but my point is, point is, it, if we had surplus power, is there a good are there good uses for it? I, I'm not sure. Based on your description, I I don't hmm. think so. I, I don't. I don't have anything that would need to run off hours or anything. You know, it's basically we're a demand type of setup around the town. Yep. So, so don't have things to cool or charge or um, th things that have that essentially have, doesn't matter when you do it. I don't think we want to get the town into the commodity speculation. <laughs> no, no, but it. it, it it was a view on how flexible is your demand really and what's the what's the cost of of not meeting your your forecast demand and in some cases you can mitigate that substantially in some cases you can remember remember one thing on this uh, on this um we have to keep in mind this net metering or this um the rules that are that are there we're, we're dealing with the net energy billing um we can't have an excess or we lose that excess after 12 months, right? So we're okay to roll it out, roll it for 12, for 11 months, but on the 12th month, we better be at the end of 12 months, we better have, um, we better have been used that or we lose that particular part of it. So I want to, I mean, I know you know this, but I want to kind of keep that, kind of bring that in perspective again too. So we should under, we definitely should under forecast. Right. No, this is only with respect to the additional contract, Sam. Yeah. The top of contract. Well, no, it's about the, the additional contract. Yeah. Okay. It is about it. Yeah. And that's, they are all part of, remember the solar farm and the additional contract is, are the, are the, are the, are the supplemental contract are under the same rules. We don't own the solar farm. Right. We are, we are, we're leasing it. They're supplying us as if they are a sponsor of solar farm developed, just like they do with their other farms. The same rules apply. So anyway, we can deal with that. We can deal with that too. Let's, we'll talk, we'll talk about that, but Harry, we, we can, we can look at that a little bit differently and I'm sure we can do something about that. Awesome. And now just be thinking about uh, kind of the question, you know, the question that you know, that I was just raised about, you know, forecasting our demand over the next five years, maybe now we can segue to our kind of energy efficiency work um, and our uh, electrifying the, the, the Cape Elizabeth town fleet in some way or other. Um, uh, Tom, you were about to, you know, share some of your thoughts on. Well, on Barbara had asked some questions, so I just want to make sure and I hadn't been in on some of the last meetings. So what, what are we thinking about here? Well, I think we are just, we are, you know, Barbara, maybe you can, you can, you know, chime in if there's something that I'm missing, but you know, we just work on, you know, ex, ex, you know, just kind of reevaluating um, the opportunity to actually do a, a, a deeper energy efficiency project um, in the town or kind of, you know, what can we do now basically as it relates to efficiency um, either, you know, is part of a, an ESCO, which is much bigger, obviously, and would in, involve schools um, or something else. There are other buildings in town, too, that, you know, that do consume power. Um, so it's kind of what's our opportunity there. And so um, the, the ESCO model came up again. 
Right, and what is the process for going about getting an evaluation done for the buildings and what it would cost and that kind of thing, whether it's worth it? Mm. Um, I think there are basically two kinds of energy efficiency companies, and I hate to come back to my conflict. So there's someone like Amoresco <laughs> who will come in, and there are other companies like them, they would come in and look at a series of buildings, um, usually schools. They call their business, you know, one of their, their business units for Amoresco and others is called the MUSH, mm -hmm. Municipalities, Universities, Schools, and Hospitals. So they'll come in and take a look at something and they will do, they will on spec kind of do an energy audit, look at it and come up with a proposal in the hopes that they'll eventually get the business. Um, and so that can be no cost. Um, it's part of the, you know, the business and the risk they undertake. Some are more fulsome than others. And that's relatively low cost. But for someone like Amoresco, you know, I don't know, other than the, the, the schools, mm -hmm. which are subject of a whole other thing going on, as we all know, Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how big that is and if it's big enough yeah. to get these bigger guys, Amoresco, Noresco, yeah. uh, these other energy services companies interested. Yeah. And if it's not big enough to get those guys interested in, then you're going to a series of smaller consultants who are, one, probably going to charge you to do the audit and come up with a plan and would help oversee a process of doing it and probably wouldn't have the ability to finance it. So they kind of come in and do an audit. Here's a plan. Here's how you can save energy. And people like an Amoresco or a Noresco are going to come in and say, we'll do it. We'll finance it. We do a shared savings contract with you for a long period of time. And it kind of becomes like the landfill that the town's not out of pocket. It's not spending capital money to do it. It's basically agreeing for another 20 year contract in which they share the savings and then Amoresco or Noresco, these guys go out and turn around and do the savings after that. Mm -hmm. And so I just don't have a sense, you know, we know what the town load is, but, you know, outside of the high school, what's the load and then what can be done? And, you know, my guess is just, you know, spending time in town hall, you know, what can be done there other than ripping the whole thing apart? Probably not a whole lot. Um, so it really depends on the volume of where you go. And if, you know, if we've got a bigger story, you know, we can go to some of the bigger players and probably get a fairly interesting deal. You know, if, you're, if we were talking about redoing all the schools and the library and the town hall, that's gonna be an interesting deal for one of these guys. But if it's, I, I think the schools are probably the linchpin in getting the volume. Mm -hmm. the, the, the challenge is- an awkward spot with the schools, right? Yeah. Because we're yeah. still in this, yeah position of not knowing if they're going to be torn down or renovated or if kids will ever go to school again. <laughs> <laughs> I know really? for, for Newtown, Connecticut, when we, we did, we had an ESCO um, company come in, Amoresco, and they did the audit and everything. And it turned out it wasn't going to be worth it for them to come in and do the, the what they were proposing to do so what the town did was they did it themselves and financed it through a state program yes. so they mm -hmm. would take three buildings at a time and have the work done by whatever company they wanted to work with and it wasn't it also wasn't cost effective if you didn't include ch changing the led lighting mm -hmm. so if we're already changing the led lighting it's probably not going to be worth it to do an yeah. estimate all of those guys, if you know, if you talk to someone like Amoresco, mm -hmm. what they what they all look for is they want a combination of some quick wins like LED lighting with fairly short payback and some longer things like you know the, the HVAC systems and building insulation or maybe even solar on a rooftop. Right. So if we're already if we're taking the short term lighting out of the mix because we're doing it ourselves, then it probably won't have a payback that's no. going to be worth it. 
well said. Hey, a guy, the thing, the other thing I'm thinking about, uh, first of all, by, by the way, there's, as Tom points out, there's a lot of small guys that get, that are associated with, let's say, uh, 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 contractors with the efficiency of Maine, mm -hmm. which you also can, you can look at all the rebates there and you can take a piecemeal approach and do it that way. But I, I'm, I'm concerned with, with, I think what was said by Carrie about what, what's going to happen with the schools. Now what's going to happen with the ventilation system? What's that going to, how's that going to affect it? We've got a, we got a, we got a lot of things up in the air, I think. Uh, and I, I think if we're, if we're going to do an energy efficiency program, I don't know what this going to be that, that well done at this point, or we even know enough about what's going on. That's my, yeah. my opinion. I think what we should do is wait and see um, what kind of new programs the state might come up with in the future as we want to get more and more of our um, energy efficiency programs going and that kind of thing. And I think it's, I think whenever a building is going to be renovated, just make sure that we do it as energy efficient. I think, possible. I think on the, on the state side, because I do a little bit up there, these guys are, they're on the green side. They want to do a lot of stuff green, but they are so budget constrained because of the virus and loss of tax revenues. Mm. Uh, you know, they've reached out to me and in, in the governor's office and simply say, I don't think we can put any money into it. How do we get private capital to do this? So I think, I think it's going to be quite some time before there's any kind of state program just for the budget concerns. Yeah, I understand that, but in five years, it may be totally different. And so the I did reach out to Efficiency Maine, um, and they they didn't point me to any specific programs that I think we hadn't found on the website. So there's they have a CNI program, they have a lighting pro which the town could participate in. There's not like a specific municipal program. And then there's the lighting program, which I um, it's basically discounted lighting, which sounds like probably we already took advantage of with the LED lighting at the high school. Um, so it seems like, I mean, it does seem like there may be some hope in the next couple of years if, um, if there's a stimulus package around efficiency and um, that might be a good time to capitalize on, uh, and it might be better timing with the school renovations in a couple of years. You know, on the other hand, I was just thinking, you know, it'd probably be pretty small, but if no one's gonna have a cheaper cost of capital, frankly, for doing this in the town, and this comes back to something John's talked about, and they're generally pretty big, but it could be kind of cool for the town that if, you know, if we went through and identified, you know, even X the school that there is, you know, a couple million maybe, I don't know what it is, but if there's a few million of energy investments that make us greener and reduce the demand and reduce the town's energy bill, do you go out and issue a green municipal bond? You know, in the capital markets, it's a hot thing. They generally want them to be bigger, but their buyers would be a neat little feather in the cap of the town. Hi, we're issuing this bond, ridiculously low, and we're just going to put this to do energy efficiency and make the town greener. And that really then comes back to say, you know, X the schools, you know, the, what is it? The, 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 the opportunity to be on the school, that I think, is Fort Williams facilities because there's a bunch of buildings there. I think some of the energy costs may be passed on to tenants, but that doesn't have to be the case. And there's the town, there's a couple of buildings in the center of town, the town hall and the one on um, community, community services and the one adjacent to community services. Yeah. And I assume, you've got about eight or 10 buildings, I think, or maybe I more. I assume the library's new and pretty efficient. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's also the, you know, the, the, there's whatever is going on down at, you know, in addition at the landfill site. But with there's the, the bus yard and the maintenance facility and yeah, so the, there's probably what 12 buildings, including Fort Williams or more. I mean, there's actually a lot of town buildings, surprisingly. Yeah. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. And then especially if things need to be upgraded um, at the buildings, this is a way to do it to finance it. 
In, yeah. Including including baseball dugouts, we have 47 structures. How <laughs> many baseball dugouts are there? <laughs> are they uh, lit with uh, incandescent lights? That one again. <laughs> I just look like, at it as a I look at it as a maintenance thing, and and even baseball <laughs> dugouts need uh, need maintenance, so it's yeah. <laughs> they might not. Hopefully, they don't use a lot of energy though. <laughs> there, there's probably uh, 10 to 20 buildings that could use. Um, updated insulation, HVAC, lighting, et cetera, which is going to run to uh, a, a million or two dollars probably. All right. So how, how do we... That's, uh, my, that's uh, my back of the envelope guess. Yeah, how do am we, I off base, Perry? Yeah. That, no, no. You're, you're, you're spot on. And, and, and actually, my, my focus would probably be on the public works building. Um, that, that's another building that's lit all day long and they have an awful lot of fluorescent lighting in there. I would, I would say on the public works building is what's your heat cost down there? Yep. I'd have to look that one up, but it's going to be up there. Absolutely. Well, and the, honestly, all the, how many buildings are there in Fort Williams? Uh, I'd say around 10. Because oh. uh, my hunch is those all could use updating and you want to roll that into the next leases. Provide the, the heat and power. Yeah. Are those, are those warehouses mostly, or is there some sort of other some like offices. offices? Yeah, we have we, we have tenants down there, uh, right. a couple offices. There are parks buildings that the uh, some of the public works crew works out of. Yeah, there's there's buildings tucked in here and there. Well, I think the next step. I mean, you know, either we do an energy audit, or we hire a third party, or we wrap it into an ESCO sort of, you know, project. It seems like the ESCO, uh, you know, this is not the right, right time for that. Um, but we, we still should wrap our head around company, all these opportunities that we have. Well, it um, sounded like Barbara, Barbara, correct me if I'm wrong, but is what you said that you got, like whoever came, Amoresco, basically clued you into all the programs that needed to be done? Yeah, they did an investment grade audit. So I think we paid for that. The town paid for that. So it was not free. Um, and they, you know, they went through all the town buildings to, to, to ter determine what needed to be done and what it would cost and the payback and all that. And they put a pro package together, but it was just not worth it for the town to do that. So we paid for the investment grade audit. But, but I gotta, you gotta remember on something like that on this, it, it, pro it may not have been big enough for Amoresco but, you know, how I sit on the board and they're looking to make, you know, in excess of 10% return on equity on any money they put at work and stuff. And so, you know, when you look at that and the volume and then they're trying to share the savings, you can't do it. My guess is the town right now can probably borrow money at one to 2%. Yeah, so we would- So we it would becomes be... a different proposition. So it- in that case, what it you know what it might make sense, depending on the cost, would be to to go out and find someone to take a look at the buildings, pay them to do that, and then see about you know and find somebody that can contract it, but for the town to just do the work itself, yeah, scope the work. What would be the ballpark cost for the energy audit? I think it was it was less than a hundred thousand, but it was like sixty five thousand, something like that. You know, I think, you know, you know, obviously we wouldn't do an energy audit on the baseball dugouts. Right. <laughs> what about what, your efficiency? What you'd probably, pick is, you'd probably pick is, you know, town hall, the maintenance shed. Um, Any building that has Fort Williams, and some light. subset. Police station, community building. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can just do it where the where the costs are, although the, the, the cost won't show up at Fort Williams, but there might be, big, again, opportunity there. Because right now, it, it's just being passed along to tenants, so it's invisible. Yeah. Does Efficiency Maine have the, they do the home energy audit program. Do they have something for town building, towns? To do the the question, they didn't mention that when I asked. Um, I can ask again. Um, well, they have a C&I bit, right? Yeah, they do. So let me, they send me the link yeah, to that. You kind of say, does the CNI do municipal stuff? Yeah, that's, that's they do. the link that they sent me. Um, I'm actually yeah. looking at it and they doing, they do see municipalities are included under the CNI umbrella, uh, mm -hmm. but they don't seem to offer any sort of discounts or program for the audit 
important. So the, 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 the thing I wonder is if there might be some sort of um, grant we could apply for that would at least fund some of the costs. It would be a quick win for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, again, this is not my area, but it's the kind of thing that, that – I could see the appeal to a granting agency that was in that area to just to help a town get started so that it could do cash flow positive energy projects. Yeah, it's a good question. I'll, 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 come, I'll research that point and it's kind of, you know, related sort of, I reached out to um, uh, Gary Porton council of governments today. Um, just remembering that I had a great call with their previous energy and sustainability person year, I guess two years ago at the beginning of this whole thing and he had left but I want to see who else was who was there, and um, just to make sure that you know that kind of we're syncing up with with regional stuff that we're not missing anything. Um, and I'm gonna have a call with a new person next week, um, and I'll definitely make sure to ask you know if if there might be any any sort of discounted opportunities uh, to do an energy energy audits for some of our buildings. Yeah, I was just googling about municipalities, and what came up was a. Uh, Efficiency made program from 2009 to 2013 for municip municipalities. Oh. Um, so that was part of the last stimulus um, that era, yep. I think. So. Yep, that's right. But, uh, there's there is a chance we could we get some good news in November. We can. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll investigate with the GP COG folks. And um, uh, yeah, I know, Carrie, you reached out to the to Efficiency Maine. Yeah, um, yeah, I can talk yeah, maybe, to Maine again. Um, yeah, maybe it's uh, for a follow-up question. Yeah, I, I messed up. I told Sam, but I thought I sent them an email and I was kind of pissed that I hadn't heard back because <laughs> this, this person actually married us. He's very good friends with my <laughs> husband. And so he was surprised I didn't hear from him. But I... <laughs> It was in my draft folder. So uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we got right back to me. Um, yeah. So we don't have, we don't have an efficiency main guest speaker for tonight. Um, but anyway, no, thanks Carrie for reaching out to him. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think that we did have one before on electric vehicles, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think that's their main program for municipalities. So if Ian was going to look around, but I'm worried they might send the electric vehicle person back. <laughs> I'm not sure. We, we may not have a speaker. But, um, we can. That's great. Okay. Um, so yeah. So we'll so so we kind of, we'll go do some some research. See if we can get an energy audit um, and kind of what the pricing might be. Um, I think I think that would be a really really great next step. And yeah, I mean it, it will be kind of our first ask in terms of um funding from the town uh so that'll be interesting to see how that goes um but i think it's justifiable expense for sure yeah, I have it's, a, it's our second it's our second ask sam we asked them to fund thirty five thousand in legal fees or whatever legal fees yeah yeah and they didn't blink at that yeah. <laughs> Which, they shouldn't have. no exactly that's, a, that's Sorry, a, is the town particularly worried about the budget these days given the um covid situation or they should, yes. Yeah. I would assume they are. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, on the plus side in the school budget, the, the state doesn't give much to this town anyway. So that even if the state budget is down, down, it won't affect the schools that much. Yeah. FYI. Yeah, and the, the state did give us some COVID relief. I think it's a little over a million bucks mm -hmm. to, to help with expenses. But the town, no, the town hasn't, I don't, I don't think it's received anything. Yeah. It's still stuck in Congress. Yeah. Yeah. Um, By the way, John, I wanted to, I wanted to just, I don't know if you're aware, but there was going to be a seat opening up on council. <laughs> <laughs> just throwing it out there. My, my, my wife is running for school board. That's enough. Yeah. And I, and my term is expiring here, and I was, I'm, I'm planning on re-upping. I don't know if you are, Sam. So, <laughs> oh, me? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, would, I got, I, I, I got miss, the note I from Deborah. I would miss my Thursday nights. I wouldn't know what to do with myself. <laughs> but. Well, hey, I think if, if the word gets out that we're doing some really cool stuff, there may be competition for your seat. So, 
I don't know. I wouldn't get too cocky. It's a labor of love. It's a labor of love. What did you say, Tom? Sam, does that mean you're considering kickbacks? Kickbacks. Uh, what are those? <laughs> He's considering <laughs> kicking back, I think. That's <laughs> yeah, kicking back. Yeah, yeah. I don't have any. Yeah. They call uh, it in the foreign camps. They call it, they call it consultants. <laughs> All right, we're going off the rails here, people. <laughs> Let's get us back. Um, so I think so. The one, the one other thing. So I think are we are we okay with the efficiency discussion for now? Basically, we're gonna we're gonna go and see if we can you know scare up any funds to um to to you know to help us pay down a, an audit. Well, should we also try to get an estimate of how much one would cost, or are we satisfied with our sixty-five thousand guests? Or is there well, well that, that was for a town that has a lot more buildings and they included all the schools, so it shouldn't mm -hmm. be that much, but. Uh, like, I wonder if yeah. there's, I know Efficiency Maine has approved auditors. Yeah, they do. Because um, I, I hired one at one point for my house. Um, uh, maybe we can. Yeah, there's a, there's a list of their qualified partners. Um, and, and they have six or seven that do energy audits for CNI customers. Yeah. Um, do we need so, the real in-depth audit or do we want to do a quick and dirty that might not cost much at all? You know, what I would do if they got, if, you know, if Efficiency Main's got six or seven listed guys recommended for the CNI space, I would go to them and just say, you know, figure out X number of buildings, how much for the quick and dirty? How much for the full investment mm -hmm. rate audit? Just give us a ballpark of range and just begin to ask them. Just get some information. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, because I, 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 I'd be happy to call two or three of them. I'm sure someone else would. Be yeah, able to I can do a couple too, Tom. If you want. I'm happy um, to do that. We just need a little more information, I think, on on how many buildings there are. <laughs> I, I think you could get a couple of them out here to, to take a, you know, a, a tour around for an hour or two and they'll give you a back of the envelope. This is what I think it would cost to do a full audit. Yeah. You know, you know and then if they've done it enough walking around. They'll kind of know they just haven't written it all up. And if they can't give you a back of the envelope, it's the wrong guy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well, the, the list I'm seeing are three in Portland and three in Scarborough. <laughs> so, you know, it should, I'm sure for for, uh, for most of them, we're, we're on their way to the place or the other. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard to get somebody to come out and spend an hour or two um, just checking checking our stuff out. So yeah, they, they'll go through. They'll walk. They'll walk through all your buildings and they'll go basically saying, "Okay, if I was to, to write this all up, it would take me about this long in the field, about this long at my desk, and it's going to cost about X." And I think you might save around Y to one to one or two significant figures. Okay. Hey, Sam, everyone, I should have said this at the beginning of the call, but I've had, I've been having sort of the week from hell on a couple of my boards and I'm going to have to jump off now and get on a board call on something we're trying to do an emergency restructuring on. Oh, geez. Um, so, hey, no worries. Thanks for, for thanks for, uh, for, for, you know, making no, the no, time. No, no, no. This is actually an incredibly pleasant diversion from all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Glad to, glad to give you a few moments of pleasure then, Tom. Okay. <laughs> Too late, Tom. And, and we'll figure it out. You know, maybe Carrie and you and I, we can exchange some emails, divvy up the list a little bit. Yep. On that Same. bit. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, sorry. That's all right. Thanks, Tom. Bye, right, Tom. I've also got to hop off. I, even though I joined late, I'm, I'm in the middle of rebuilding my, my brick stairways. So I've, I've got to get that done before I go to bed tonight. <laughs> oh, <geez>. <laughs> um. <laughs> So I, I still, I'll circle back with you, Carrie and Barbara, still about. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I dropped the ball on that. I was on North Haven and I trying to manage my. And, and then and then I did afterwards. So no problem. <laughs> so sorry. But I'll circle back up through, after this meeting. And we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll sort of pick up where we left off. But I've also got to hop. So All right. thanks see you guys later. Good meeting. Good, Good stuff. Great. You got, I was, I was going to ask. Um, Ask ask about the the status of a uh, of a, what was the kind of the John's you know um, uh, idea for a you know a grand plan and kind of reporting and stuff. But it sounds like 
there's, there's, there's nothing quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a grand plan about it anyway. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice idea for sure. I mean, yeah. and uh, I'll let uh, well, still, can... still a grand plan for a grand plan, but mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Well, plan. well, it's like I, I do like the idea of kind of having kind of a uh, free and kind of seamless flow between of information between us and town council and making sure we're all kind of hitting the same notes. Um, but um, yeah, he's got some ideas for that. So we'll look forward to we'll look forward to hearing maybe the next at the next meeting you know what what, what comes of that um and um good well you, you may have seen i sent or you will see check your email i, I did no. send out the link of those qualified partners that do uh, aim audits for cni uh, folks oh, great. So, great. and there are there are six so yeah a couple folks can take take three and then boom it shouldn't be that hard i can i can call some two of us and like maybe you and tom were willing to do that carrie oh. which is great so um, thanks for that. That'll be exciting to get, get that done. And again, if, if, if the number is 60K for an audit for the city, the side of Newtown, Connecticut, which is not a small town, um, I, we could probably get one done for less. But, you know, I know that, um, you know, things always cost more than you think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is. Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see. Um, good. And I guess the one other thing, or is it to me, any more thoughts on the efficiency audit sort of task project? No, okay. Um, and the one other thing I think, unless there's something else I'm missing, but as on the electric electric vehicle part, and again, I I, I didn't want to bother Perry with this while you know, he's got his um, working on so many other things um, of urgency, but um, this continues to be on my mind and would love to kind of, you know, to, to see this through. Um, but it just, it's, it's, it's come up on the back burner at the moment, but unless, unless Perry, you have any thoughts you want to share on that? I did notice that today the efficiency main did submit or did put, put out, um, publish an RFP, uh, or, or something for electric vehicle charging grants. Um, so like, like last year, they are kind of, you know, paying down some of the installation costs and maybe the purchase costs of electric vehicle charger stations. Oh, um, for municipalities? Mm -hmm. Yeah, municipalities. Yeah. Oh, I think we should definitely go after the, that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's not it's not a free charger. It's basically I remember last year, it was like a fifty percent you know um, cost share thing. But um, I think we've got a pretty compelling case for having an electric vehicle charger. I mean, like at Fort Williams, I know there was an issue relating to um, uh, internet access there and how you. Mm -hmm. When the person from Efficiency Maine came to talk, it, we learned that you needed to have internet access so you could charge the people. But uh, we could look into that. Um, but it seems like, I mean, I think we would have a good shot at getting one. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I think, yeah, I, I don't think we'd have any problem, you know, kind of win, winning the grant. It's just, you know, can we, would be able to make the case internally in terms of the town um, that it's something that's worth spending however thousands of dollars it is to do it. Um, and so kind of as I was thinking about it, it would, they, it would make a lot of sense, you know, if the town were to kind of um, replace uh, an aging vehicle that's gas powered or diesel powered with an electric one. And that would be kind of an obvious you know, moment to do this. Um, but in the absence of like a town owned or a town leased uh, electric vehicle, um, the case may be harder to make, but um i i would i would totally love to have some EV chargers around town and could could make the case on many other levels um but um but yeah don't don't know if there would be um appetite you know in a town council to you know put down you know a few thousand dollars for a charger that i guess they would charge they, they could you know, they'd charge users if you yeah know, if we that. could like figure out how much they could charge the users and then like if there was a you know, maybe a business case for it. Mm -hmm. well, it would, would it make sense to get one put at near town hall where the town green is? And then um, if we do get a town electric vehicle, then the town could just charge, you know, plug it in there. Or at the police, you know, other places around town that were the town. Yeah, it seems like it makes vehicle. most sense for if the town has a vehicle to have it be in the town center. And, yeah. but for, for people, like, there's so many, well, not as many this year, but still, there's a lot of tourists going to Fort Williams who could probably yeah. charge well, I mean, off. we should probably have more than one at some point. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, it could be a way for the town to actually to pay down, you know, the price of the of the of the system. Um, and who knows, maybe maybe a profit center for the town on some level. Um, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not quite how much money, you know, how, what the financing looks like, how it works for a charging station. Um, you know, I know the town makes money selling parking, you know, renting parking spaces at, town, at Fort Williams. Um, you know, what are the finances of, of uh, you know, renting a charger for an hour or two? When, when is the, um, when do you have to respond to the RFP? Um, looking at it now, let's see, to do, do, do RFPs. <clears throat> I have four of those too. It says um, closing date December one. December 1. So it was, it was issued today, and so our fees are due like in what three three months. Um, so it gives us some time to, to figure out kind of what. So it seems what, like we need to figure out how much a charging station costs, and then that would be part of it. Right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Depends on what kind it is, but they're not. I don't think they're that expensive. They're like ten thousand for the. Level, Middle tier, I think. The level two ones. Yeah. Yeah. Part, you of, the issue, part of the issue is what you've got for service in the area. I mean, what you know, what kind of what kind of power is available in what locations in the fort, et cetera. So that's, yeah. That can be more of the cost than just the, uh, the cost of the station itself. Mm -hmm. I can look at that if you like. Yeah, that'd be great. What about yeah. making, in, enticing the developer of the Town Green project to put in at least the electricity, the conduit, to have one there? I think that's a great idea, but I think they've already approved it. <laughs> so. Also, I don't know if there's parking there. I think they were going to use the parking behind Town Hall, weren't they? I think that yeah. was part of the... the dental office and everything? I think that maybe those offices are going to have their own parking yeah. spot. I think they would have so but maybe the green, if you're parking to go to the green, you're supposed to park at the town hall. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just looking at the RFP real quick and it says if this if the the um, charger is networked, meaning it can talk to the internet, you can take payment and so forth, um, they'll pay up to four thousand dollars per plug or eighty percent of the costs. So that's you know, decent. If it's a five thousand dollar unit, they'll pay thousand dollars of it and if it's not networked meaning it's just basically you know it's a uh you know it's, it's it's stuck to the side of the building and it's you know there's no intelligence to it in terms of you know you can take charging they'll still pay 80 percent um of the system uh, which is yeah these things aren't aren't that much really um you know probably talking thousand fifteen hundred dollars or so for just the the dumb charger um and if the the, the state will pay 80%, you know, it's just a few hundred bucks. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's, yeah, I would think that, that there would be some interest, you know, in the town to do this, even if there weren't, I mean, if, if, if those are the incentives that they're offering, um, which are pretty, pretty darn good. Um, you know, there may, there may be, you know, a desire to, to you know, to pick up hundred bucks, you know, just to, to take advantage of this. Um, but I think it would be especially nice um, and, and attractive to the town if if it was for to, to charge some of their own fleet too. Um, yeah, so I guess. Yeah. Go ahead. But the cost is associated with type of charge you've got, whether it's a type two or a type one or type three. And of course, th that also determines the kind of service you've got available. Yeah, it says only two char type two chargers are, are, are eligible. Okay. So those are the, the kind of the. three chargers were very expensive, right? Weren't those? Yeah, like, those are like just $40,000 of right? So it might make sense to at least get a couple of the um, non-networked ones for the town. So wherever we might, we think we might get town electric, um, town elect mm -hmm. electric town on vehicles, put them there and then maybe a networked one or two at some point, maybe not all this year, but get one networked for Fort Williams or somewhere else mm -hmm. where people are parking and walking and doing that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's yeah. I can definitely see that. So yeah, I'd be curious to know. And Richard, I don't. Um, uh, you can you mentioned your willingness to to look into this, and I I can do it too. Um, but yeah, kind of you know, what would be a what would be a, a cost? You know, just to 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 get a some non networked ones. You know, stuck to the side of town hall, um, or maybe some other public you know space. I'm guessing town hall probably because it's probably the most convenient. Um, 
and what would also what would be what would be the cost of a networked one you know one or two um in fort williams i can i can think that it could be you know, if there's power I mean, you know there is power because of course they've got the um uh you know they've got the parking um you know stations there um so yeah yeah it'd be curious to know, I mean, what, what that might look like um i think we'll have to we'd have to present you know those the, you know kind of the, the proposal you know from the vendor um as part of our rfp or our proposal um but um it seems good anyway, I'll, I'll forward this on to you guys as well so you can all take a look at that um but that would be yeah that'd be kind of a neat, neat little thing and hopefully we can get our um we, <laughs> we, can, we can work to get the paperwork in in time um and uh and then not just leave it to Maureen to do it for us, which I think was kind of the um, miscommunication last time we tried this. And it was also kind of a last minute thing. Um, and then, and, and Perry, I'm not quite sure your, your timing is, um, but if you may have, you know, an hour or so in the next, you know, again, you know, few months maybe, or a few weeks to kind of to look over the fleet um, and see if there might be any matches in terms of us an old vehicle that you guys, you know, are, you know, is, is going to turn over on a lease or something. It's maybe an opportunity um, to kind of, you know, to upgrade, you know, some vehicles in the fleet. Um, I would, I will, I will take you up on that any, whenever you have a moment. Yeah, no, it's, uh, I can, we can definitely get that done. I, a lot of, uh, basically the bulk of it, I just call over to the business office and they have records of, you know, the years, makes, models, and yeah. numbers for all the, all the vehicles purchased. So I yeah. can get that information. I, you, you have an outdated list of that that I gave to the committee when we first got together. Mm -hmm. I can get an updated one. I can tell you myself, for my department, I am currently, although I haven't had time, um, I'm currently in the market for a van. Uh, let me think here. A van and a pickup truck. Um, the van would be bought with uh, budget money, or I'm sorry, the pickup truck's bought with budget money. The van is going to be purchased with the some of the state money for the COVID, uh, mm. just because of the initial transport or the the increased transportation we have to do. Um, and as you were talking, I was looking <laughs> on the web. I, I haven't even had a chance to, to even process this, but I was looking on the web to see what was available right now as far as electric vans and things like that. So, uh -huh. yeah, uh -huh. I, definitely more to come. I mean, just just know that if, in my department, I have two two uh, vehicles on the table. And where are those vehicles kept? Because that's where we should put a charging station if you're going to get electric for versions they would most likely both of them i believe would be at the high school to the rear of the high school back by the football stadium area yeah there's, the pool there's also this seventy five hundred dollar yep. grant or, or rebate from efficiency main for municipal electric vehicles so yeah so don't they have a list on their website it's be expensive but yeah they do so Look on the um, efficiency main website for electric vehicles, and you can see what they uh, what's on their list. All right. Yeah, and so yeah, Perry, I, I'd be happy to sit down with you and whenever whenever you feel like you have a you know some energy to to, uh, to think about this. Um, I think it would be cool. And I was just I'm sure, I think I, I sent around an article in the Press Herald about the Kennebunk police or the fire chief who now drives a Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it made me chuckle a bit. Of course, you know, Kennebunk and, and Cape and, you know, Yarmouth would, would be the towns with Teslas driven by, um, you know, uh, you know, town employees. But, hey, I mean, if, if, if we can be smart enough to figure out how to pull that off, that'd be great. And, it's, and not just to, hey, let's get a free Tesla, but to actually, you know, replace you know, um, you know, a vehicle that we're already using and, and, you know, and paying, you know, paying, you know, money to fuel with gas and it's just, you know, filthy. Um, that'd be the great. big payback is maintenance. There's almost no maintenance on electric vehicles. Yes, Nothing. exactly. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a big, that's a big piece. Um, and then kind of one, and one kind of overarching kind of 
uh, thought that I that I kind of had that kind of is driving you know all this and kind of has been from the very beginning for me at least is kind of the you know the the, the climate um, you know benefits of of you know adopting kind of you know energy efficiency and clean power and kind of and these technologies and um, you guys may have all seen um, today I kind of sent out maybe I've heard it otherwise um, the the Portland South Portland kind of have this draft climate plan now. Um, and I was thinking, again, we've discussed this before, um, but you know, is it the energy committee's role at all to kind of inspire something like that in Cape or, I mean, clearly it would be kind of the, you know, the bailiwick of another, of a, you know, of the town council or something else. But do we have a role, do you think, to kind of try to usher that towards some sort of, you know, kind of, uh, kind of actual status or in project in, in town? Um, we have to think about 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 that, and if, it, if it's relevant. I think that would roll out after you know once we get this uh, overall communication plan and that Carrie and uh, Barbara are working on. Mm -hmm. Something might yeah, fall from that. We should come up with a climate plan at some point. Yeah, then, yeah. You know, bring it out to the town council or whatever to get input from them and everything, but. And maybe the conservation, is there a conservation commission? We can, we can include other. Yeah, I think the conservation committee, well, if Brent is on it, seems like it, they're very focused on like the trails and stuff, but yeah. they hopefully yeah. they climb it too. <laughs> There's a recycling committee. Yeah, that yeah. Anything that's this. related. Yeah. yeah. And my guess is that it may require the town to create some sort of ad hoc committee. <laughs> I'm guessing and just kind of thinking about kind of how, how they would work um, and that kind of that ad hoc committee, you know, would be kind of in charge of kind of consolidating, you know, expertise, you know, from, from the other committees and maybe other, kind of other, other, um, you know, town, you know, town bodies. Um, but, well, this, um, um, this plan, South Portland, Portland plan might be a good thing for us all to review to get ideas for some things our committee could be doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great, yeah, it's, as anything, it's a great reference, you know, for like, oh, yeah, have we thought of this, have we thought of that? Um, so, um, anyway, um, okay, I feel like we've done a lot tonight. Um, uh, do we have takeaways on everything? So, Sam, you are going to kind of, you know, write up some kind of like a little a, a, a quasi, maybe, RFP or some thoughts, maybe just, you know, a couple of lines about kind of a solar, um, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the interim solar, maybe longer term kind of solar contracting thing and bring it to Matt. I think so, he's still there. <laughs> maybe he dropped off. Um, anyway, I think I, I think I heard that as, as a takeaway. Um, uh, is, I'm sorry, I was sleeping. Um, <laughs> you know what were you saying? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I was just, I was just <laughs> confirming your homework assignment. That, that yeah, I heard you. I heard you. Don't worry. I had a mute. <laughs> got it. Got it. Um, so that's great. And then um, let's see. Oh yeah, the energy audit piece. Yeah. Well, you know, you know. Um, I think you know, Carrie and Tom are going to you know, uh, you know, maybe call call a handful or all of those those names on the list, and kind of you know just see. Yeah. You know, see what we can do there. Um, in the meantime. Um, I'll also kind of re, re, I'll check in with the the kind of the energy and sustainability person at uh, GB Cog and kind of just going to ask her ask her about about that as well um, and other kind of maybe other things that we may be missing um, and then uh, let's see yeah on the and then Richard you said you would kind of you know, investigate the you know but, but you know pricing for a um, for a networked kind of an EV station. At Fort Williams, um, and that'd be great to hear that. And so, I think I think we can have a goal of submitting a proposal, you know, in this um, this RFP for uh, for a charger. Of course, we'll have to, you know, get some ducks in a row. But this is some good due diligence. Um, and I will send out that RFP. Um, and then and then Carrie, um, you and John will, will hopefully touch base. Uh, before our next meeting and kind of and, and help us kind of formulate can you know, what a what a what a kind of a well-running sort of you know 
system might look like in terms of interacting with the with the town council and having check-ins and getting just kind of you know being you know kind of more streamlined yeah you know, in terms of our car work with them um was there anything else that we talked about in terms of to do items uh, sam i have a i have a document that i got together for the school board and town council that i kind of used to show newer members what what my department services on a daily uh -huh. basis and that has a list of all the i'm going to say structures but they, it comes with pictures as well so you guys can see uh it's basically everything the town owns that we mm. have. so mm -hmm. so it, it'll it'll come with names and pictures that i'll send well, out that, there. i think that's really helpful perry we can we can show that to some of these energy audit people maybe yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm out of the office tomorrow, but I'll send it Monday morning. Okay, great. Perfect. Thanks, Perry. Um, good, good. I thought I feel very excited about all that stuff. And then, um, yeah, I, 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 I'm not going to volunteer to write a climate action plan for the town, you know, <laughs> the next few weeks. Um, but I do think just, you know, personally, um, I think it would be important for, for Keep to kind of to, to step up and um, you know, at least, at least have a, a public conversation about, you know, about it. Um, okay, what are what are responsible, uh, what are, what are responsibility might be to kind of to address, you know, um, you know, climate change and you know, in our town, and there's also, of course, the you know, the the impacts of climate change in in town. I mean, we are a coastal community, um, and I'm sure are experiencing some of the 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 brunt from like you know sea level rise. Um, anyway, I think just, it, I think we could we can all probably agree that it's worth it's worth like, you know thinking about that uh, at least collectively as a community whether the energy committee does it or not. But um, I'll, I'll I'll take opportunities as, as as I can to kind of to to urge the powers that be to to kind of to move that along. I'd like to help with that, Sam. Um, okay. Maybe we can write a draft of just some ideas and then you know, include other people as needed to get more information and then however we don't we need to get buy in from the town and that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to help too. But I'll let you guys start and I'll I'm very much in favor of, of um a plan. A plan. <laughs> <laughs> Making yeah. a plan instead of just doing things here and there. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. It'll be super high level at this point, but no, this is good. We can, we can, we can, you know, keep that, keep that going or maybe you know, or, or kickstart that. Mm -hmm. um, I think eventually all, everybody needs to be, you know, zero carbon emissions as mm -hmm. soon as possible. So it's better to have a plan to get there rather than just doing things as they come along. Right. Right. Exactly. And actually it's reminds me, Carrie, I had wanted to ask you, um, yeah, there may not be enough time now, but um, anyway, it's just I know you you actually uh, participated in the in the Maine Climate Council work, right? Um, did you yeah. share yeah. one of the yeah one in of the, the in what? the energy working group? Um, yeah, can you, can, you, yeah. Can, you, can you give us a quick a quick update in terms of your work there? Yeah, so and, oddly, our uh, energy working group we are kind of finished. Um, I I I I think we might get back together so. So basically, there were all these working groups of the Climate Council. So there was, my group was the energy working group. So we were working on like basically um, energy, mostly energy supply, but also some like ideas around um, energy, like distribution systems and transmission and sort of basically delivering energy. We're also included fuels, you know, um, and mm -hmm. then there's a transportation group, there was a buildings group, um, and then there were those transportation and buildings were groups that our group sort of interacted with. And then there were um, other groups like coastal issues or the fisheries group. Um, there might, I think there was a couple other groups. I can't remember what they, they were. But so we, all of our groups put together recommendations, which we sent to the Climate Council, I think in June. And how um, they actually had a meeting this week, which I wasn't able to attend, where they were sort of working through some of the recommendations. So I think, 
I'm not sure exactly the timing, but at some point there should be a report coming out. But all the materials are on the Climate Council website um, that we put together. But so, so our energy working group, we had like three or four recommendations that we put forward to the Climate Council. Cool. Um, so. That's great. Yeah, no, I th and, and to the extent that, 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 you know, we as a committee can, you know, in work with the town to adopt any of those. I mean, again, I think what you're doing obviously is, is not municipalities shall do X, Y, Z. It's more like, you know, much, much yeah, bigger. I would say the one, one thing that was really challenging is, so for like our energy working group, which is encompassing a, kind of a lot, because if, we, if you consider we are talking about not just electricity, but also like natural gas and oil and all sort of all the fuels that run everything. Um, and we had, I think, three or four recommendations. And so I was really working on the energy supply recommendations. And so, you know, our recommendations were like one recommendation involved like sort of a lot of sub things so we could get all of our, all of our, you know, our whole wish list in there. But um, yeah, I think, um, yeah, I'll, I'll think about how the, I'll, I'll make sure I figure out how the town can interface with that. Um, um, particularly when the final thing comes out. I think we lost Sam. Oh, there he is. Oh, that's very interesting group you're in. Yeah, it was. It was very interesting. It was a it was a good group, and we they didn't give us any any um, slack when we had to start meeting remotely. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah. We just no. forged ahead. So, um, but there was it was a good group. A lot of a lot of smart people. So. Um, Sorry, Carrie, I, I, my, my phone died, so I had to get up on my computer, but no, that's really great. Thanks for doing that. Yeah, um, yeah. We were, I was, I was, I was, I was glad to see your name, you know, up there and you represented that, that you're representing, you know, kind of our, our little committee. It, it was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she did it, representing our committee. <laughs> well, I always think about our committee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, Anyway, all right. I think I think are we all good for now, folks? Yep. Yep. Okay. Um, does someone want to move to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. There we go. I will second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Uh, yes. Aye. Yes. Yes. Right. Okay. Good night, Sounds everybody. Sounds good. All right. So so yeah. the motion is adopted. We shall adjourn this meeting for tonight. All right. Um, okay. okay. I'm sorry to ruin the fun. Have a good <laughs> yeah, well. It's